Matthew 7, verse 21. Still, we should finish up the Sermon on the Mount today. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. That's the millennium. That's the physical kingdom with birds, animals, and trees. Different from the kingdom of God. But he that did not he that doeth the will of my father, which is heaven, there's works. Obeying the law. Which also comes to show you that not everyone. Not everybody's gonna go to heaven. Many shall say to me in that day, and you run back to verse 13, Enter ye in the straight gate, for wide is the great that broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go thereat. The primary sense of salvation of the, of the human beings on this earth, there will be many in hell. And few in heaven. Religion would say, "My journey be in heaven, and or all will be in heaven." That's not biblical. When you get into the millennium, you're not going to find every Jew there. Now, as far as Christians, I don't know what happens to Christians. Who do not earn a millennial inheritance. A right to reign with Jesus. I don't know what happens to the worldly carnal Christian. And there are plenty. Because you say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. The name of Jesus. But Paul will tell us later that there is another Jesus. There is a Pentecostal Jesus. There is a Catholic Jesus. There is a Presbyterian Jesus. There is a worldly Jesus. There is a television Jesus. There is even a Baptist Jesus. There's a bunch of Jesuses running around in Mexico called Jesus. I would assume and imagine, I've never heard, but I would assume that in the Italian name or maybe the Polish name, there, there's Jesus. But there's a name above all names that is the name of Jesus Christ. And you'll hear people, Jesus, Jesus, oh my sweet Jesus. You get the black political church you know, that, that, that preaches, you know, the, the you know socialism and, and get a candidate that will help, the, you know, whatever the garbage it is. Oh my sweet Jesus, that may not be the Jesus of the Bible. And you, you've heard, you know, on the television, Jesus be healed, and that ain't gonna do you nothing. Because that Jesus be healed, why doesn't that guy take that Jesus to a hospital? Oh, in the name of Jesus, some political party is going to get married this year. Why don't you play the numbers, take the money off the numbers that you win and give and help all... Oh. Come judge me. We all are going to learn that there are many names of Jesus. But there's only one name of Jesus. There's only one name of Jesus that every knee shall bow. But then we do a whole bunch of stuff in your name. And you know what? They could do it in the name of Jesus. And don't believe in Jesus. You got a Jehovah Witness Jesus. He's not God. You got a Mormon Jesus. He's brothers with, with Lucifer.
in the early Americas in the 60s and that, you had a hippie, whippy, smoking pot in Jesus. Now most of those people are in the White House now. Capitol Hill. Didn't we smoke pot with you, Jesus? Didn't we have peace and full love with you, Jesus? That's not the Jesus. You had political uh, uh, candidates and political people in office. And Jesus, Jesus. You only said the name of Jesus to please. You didn't mean it. Then will I, Jesus himself, profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Those are the fearful words of all the be. He's not talking to an atheist. Well, that's bad enough. They're going to hell. He's talking. He, the people walk up to Jesus and say, hey, Jesus, did eh. And you'll find those people there in the book of Acts. I never knew you. Yeah, but didn't I say a prayer and I ended it in Jesus' name like the preacher told me? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Notice how ye workers, ye that work iniquity, they're still charged with the sins. They have not been cleansed of their sins. You can go to a Baptist church and you know, from the time that you came out of your mother's womb, 98, 100 years later, dead in a, in a Baptist church and heard Jesus, know Jesus, know the books of the Bible. But if you have not believed, if you not put your faith and trust in Jesus, no matter what you did for Jesus, cutting the lawn, washing the floors, and, and Jesus this, and birthday presents for Jesus for that, and Easter hunt for Jesus, and did the books for Jesus, and usher the people, Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, depart from me. In other words, what Jesus is telling you, go to hell. With your sin. Not everybody's saved. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine, the word of God, what Jesus is saying. This would be the gospel. Talking to Jews. There's no church. There's no death and burial and resurrection. Don't go running to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John with church age doctrine, which does not apply to you. Who's ever here? These sayings of mine. The word of Jesus in a Bible, red letters. All the writings of Paul are all in black. There's some places in Acts it's red. And do with them salvation. Are you going to put to a Christian this day and age? Of the church age? Oh, if you don't do what the Bible says, if you don't love your, your, your brother, what, you lost your salvation? What do you do? You never lose it. Never forsake to your... Uh, you can't lose your salvation. All right? Saying what we're going to follow up for people who don't, who don't do what Jesus... Well, you got a very conflict thing here that Matthew says one thing and the church epistles say another thing. But if he doesn't, James, written to the twelve tribes scattered aboard, be ye doers of the words and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. Do, do, do is a Jewish, without the salvation of blood of Jesus Christ and faith and trust, do, do, do is a works of the law. Now the Christian does works after salvation, not for salvation. 
I will liken him to a wise man. Now there are things that Jesus said a Christian can do and be wise, but they're not for salvation. They would be for rewards. Gold, silver, precious stones, but not to get to heaven. Which built his house upon a rock. What are you going to do with that one with a Christian? Now let me ask you. All right, let's go run it off to the church age. Which built his H-O-U-S-E-S -E -S upon a rock. Well, listen, you got a Baptist church here, you got a Baptist church there in that city, in the neighboring town you got a Baptist church, and in that neighboring town you got a Baptist church, in that neighboring city you got a Baptist church, and in that county you got a Baptist church, you got a Baptist church here, and a Baptist church here, and there a Baptist, there a Baptist, everywhere, Baptist, oh, McDonald had a bunch of Baptist churches, E-I-E-I-O. And in that church, say, oh, Lord God, we'd like to welcome you into our church. Thank you for we get to be in the house of the God today. No, that's Old Testament. In the Old Testament, there was one particular building to meet God. Not today. Because in the book of Acts, okay, then they sinned. Because the book of Acts, you know, they went house to house breaking bread. Now this house is the man's house like the Philippian jailer. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thy, thy shall be saved and thy house. I hate to say it, but you really can't apply that verse today because, you know, if a man gets saved and he goes home and he tells his wife and children or tells her husband and the children, I got saved or tell mom and dad, Primary today, that house is not going to get saved. So today, it's a house divided. He's built his house, not a church. There's no death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. He built his house with the temple being there in Jerusalem. Upon a rock. That rock is Jesus. And the reason why we know that rock is Jesus, look at 1 Corinthians. Now we'll go run to Paul. And people, I haven't been accused. Well, you know, you're Paul onlyism. I mean, I get all my doctrine from Paul. If Paul didn't write it, there's no Bible. Well, you know, this is as, as a Hayward family. And it been dwindled and we had problems, we had deaths and all that. This is the second time we've gone from the whole Bible, we're in the book of Matthew. We went from Genesis to Revelation, we went back to Genesis. Something happened to my son. My, my wife passed away in 2019. We're back in Matthew. If I was Paul only, I would have done <laughs> Can you imagine how many times we would go into Paul's books only, if I was Paul only? What I do is I take what the Bible says and I show you what Paul says about the church. But what is written in the Bible is not, listen, the church age is only a little sliver. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 10.4, Did all drink that spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual rock, R, capitalized, that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Go back to Matthew. So not only did that man hear the words of Jesus, you must be born again. That's... that's Something Jesus said, you can apply to the church. Now, there are people out there who say, no, no, no. That's only written. <laughs> oh, boy. You got, you've got gone on the other side. You can apply spiritualized Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to the Christian. 
what, Lucifer never fell out of heaven because it's written in Isaiah? He built his house upon a rock because he listened and he did what Jesus said. Now, if you're a Christian today and you are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, you have put your faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ, nothing else, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you are saved. And if you don't do anything for Jesus, you are a total flop, absolutely nothing. You just go out and do whatever you want to do. You're saved, you're saved, you're saved. Don't expect any rewards. You didn't lose your salvation. Now, if you are in the church age, and I did, I did, I did, I did this, I did that in the church, and I did this, and I walked old ladies across the road, and I gave money to, to, to this charity, and, and I cut the lawn, and I made sure the lawn was so high, and, and I attended every single service, and I went to every single fellowship. I tried at least one piece of food from every plate that was at the fellowship. Depart from me, I never knew you. I never missed a day in church. That's not salvation. But if you do what the Bible says to do after you... Listen, there are things for Christians to say to do, but we're not forced. You have a complete free will, and I heard about it. No, I don't like the word free will. Well, what else do you call it? Okay? He built his house upon the rock. <coughs> Excuse me. Now that's a small R. Spiritually applied, we can put it on the G. Uh, we can put it on God, Jesus. But well, let's look at something. Let's put it in context. Let's put it to literal. The rain descended. The floods came. And the winds blew. And beat upon the house. All right. Hurricane Ivan came to Florida. I don't know what the name of that typhoon over there in the Philippines. And the winds blew, the rain came, the storms came. That was over a month ago. There are Christians that don't have a house, they don't have water, they don't have electricity, and they're being forced out of, of the temporary shelters they're living in now. I kept the Word of God. I got the King James Bible. And my house was destroyed. There have been churches, I have been told, that have been destroyed in that. There are pastors' houses. There are missionaries' houses in Florida that have been destroyed. What do you do with that verse? We've had plenty of hurricanes come through Florida, even times when I, I wasn't living in Florida, and come through and done destruction. And you know the Christian, the King James Bible believed the Christian, and everything was destroyed. What do you do? Matthew 7 25, what do you do? Evidently, Matthew 7 25 is not for the Christian. Look at the life of Paul. He had, all right, Paul fasted. Amen, glory to God. You should fast. There was a time that Paul fasted of, of drinking. Not only food, but drinking. Amen. Glory to God. There's a time which Paul wasn't married, so but it was not he said, listen, the husband and wife should say, you know what? We're gonna have a period of no marriage bed relations in prayer together. Amen. Glory to God. Go for it. But what are you gonna do when Paul says, I in the perils of my life, of the perils of the Jews, and the perils of the Christians. There were times I was hungered. There was times I was naked. Listen, Paul is the most outstanding Christian ever to be remarked outside of Jesus. What would you, wouldn't you think the, the word of God, Paul said, listen, I was a Pharisee of the Pharisee. I kept the, law, the, the, the word, I, heard, I kept the law. I forget how he used the term, but I kept it faithful. 
And at the end of his life, he came and said, listen, I have a parchment and, and a couple books. According to Matthew 7, 25, all right, his life was a waste. Jesus is not talking to Gentiles. He's not talking to Christians. And, and, and a pastor that I know of a church, you want his name. You know, there were Christians back there in, in, in the Old Testament. Daniel, all them, they were Christians. All right? Then you're a flop. You don't do the Word of God. Why? Because I know when Hurricane Ian came in, I, I don't know 100%, but... From being in your church in times back, I guarantee half your property was underwater at the floods. As bad as the floods were all around, there are places they told today we we're coming home from the gym. I was like, this area was flooded? And I seen this, the, the drone. Uh, uh, this The area I'm talking about was completely underwater. I'm like, wow. We got an actor built. <laughs> I know that man's church property was underwater. At least half of it. Well, I guess he didn't do what the Word of God said. Spiritualize it. If you're a Christian, all your material things, all your carnal things will be wiped out, but everything that's done for Jesus will survive in the judgment seat of Christ. You will be exchanged for gold, silver, and precious stones. Upon the rock of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to get so. Listen, when Hurricane Ian, whatever you want to name it, where I, I stayed home. All during that storm, we, we, we our power stayed on. We didn't see any flooding at all where we live. I'm not going to go so bold as to say, well, I'm more of a Christian than them because they were destroyed. And I, no, no, no. I had particular blessings of God. But I'm not going to go, hey, look at me. I, I'm the wise man built my house. on. No, 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 no. Because Satan goes up to God and says, do you see what he did? It wasn't for the blood of Jesus Christ. It wasn't for Jesus, my advocate, stepping in. Wait a minute, hold on, Father. <laughs> yeah, he may be guilty, but it's under the blood. You see what kind of dangers when you run to Matthew? I could try, I could be a holier than now. Your house was destroyed. You're not a man. You're not a wise man. My house was destroyed. My, we were. You maybe the devil protected you. You know, some people say, well, we're blessed a great day. You know, you realize the devil will give you blessings? You can't keep them. Okay. Before we close this verse. Jesus has not died. He's not buried. And he's not risen again. He's speaking to a bunch of Hebrews, Jews, Israelite people. He's teaching them the law. He's teaching them because he already knows. He knows that the Jews are going to the tribulation. He knows they're going to be going to millennium. So he's teaching kingdom promises, kingdom ways. Though they're going to reject him, and the book of Acts is going to transition from, from uh, Jews to Gentiles. You realize where we're speaking right now, there, there is no church. If the Jews had received Jesus, let's say after the, after the burial resurrection, let's say for a moment the disciples came to the tomb, besides the women. Let's say Pilate came to the tomb. Let's say the, the Pharisees, and said, they're all waiting outside the tomb, even before Jesus comes out. Let's say they're all waiting there at that tomb, and they say, you know, Jesus, you know, we were reading the scriptures last night, and we did, you are the Messiah, that, that, that woman who had four or five husbands. She said, well, we know Messiah's coming. Jesus says, this is him. I am him. She goes and tells the man, I found the Holy One. I found the Messiah. 
She believed. What if they all came to Jesus before he come out of that too? They believed the three days and three nights. They did it. Let's say they had put their faith and trust in Jesus and completely and without remorse. I mean, without, I don't even know what they're trying to find. We're sorry for what we did. We want to get right with you. And we want to get right with the Father. You know, there would have been no church. The tribulation period would have come seven years. I mean, Israel's got to get the spanking. At the end of the seven years, Jesus would have come. There would have been no church. He would have brought them into the, to the millennium. The millennium, devil locked up. And the millennium, devil would be put forth. Then he would get his army. And he'd go cast off in the lake of fire. And it would be the great white throne judgment. They would be judged on their conscience as far as the Gentiles. There would be new heavens, new earth. I don't know about New, New Jerusalem. There would be no saints. No. Listen, if Paul and the Pharisees would have gotten right under the law with the Messiah, things would have been a lot different. But we know what happened. We know they rejected Jesus. They rejected the apostles. They rejected God. God put them up on the shelf. It's individual Jews, but now here's the Gentile. The Gentiles are only here. You hate the Gentiles? Peter, I want you to go to the Gentile. Oh, no way. I haven't eaten nothing unclean. Oh, yeah, you better watch this. They're going to get saved under you. And he's sitting there, and the Holy Ghost falls before he even comes up with the invitation. He's standing there like, these people and that rotten smell of food they're cooking? We must be under, what did you say, Peter? We must be under grace. Yes. Go ahead, have that lobster. What? And you know Peter had that lobster. He had the pork. Because later on in the book of Acts, he's sitting down with, with a bunch of Christians. He's having a good old feast. And you know he was eating unclean food according to the law. Because here comes the Jews. He gets off and takes off. There's this plate that said, this spot reserved for Peter. That whole thing is a transition to the book of Acts. We're not in the book of Acts. There is no death and burial and resurrection. You can only spiritualize unless when you say when you see Jesus say something, do something, and then Paul backs it up for the church. Now, Paul would back this up is after you're saved, everything that you do for Christ will stand. Okay, so now. And the rains descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and it beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Now, for the Christian, it's not a house. It's your conduct and your activity for what you've done for Christ. Don't you dare put your church in there. Come on, you really think that God's going to bless your church if you've got Satan sitting in your church and the doors are closed to Jesus? You want to go on a field trip with me a couple churches here in Volusia County? Couple of them won't even let me in. One church officially said I can't come back to their church because I said there's too many decorations at their VVS. Oh, don't go with the letter that was sent a month later. Let's go with the text. Everyone that hears these sayings of mine, Jesus, okay. Now remember, John. We're in Matthew seven. John tells us there was a lot more that happened than was written. And what Jesus is in his life's ministry is he is backing the law. He is purposing the law. He is, he is not violating the law. 
He's fulfilling the law. And doeth them not shall be likened to a foolish man which built his house upon sand or Florida. Florida is a state, and I looked it up, it's my jury sand. People who come to Florida and build like people building cliffs of California during rock slides and earthquakes. You're a fool. But there are houses that survived in earthquakes. There are houses that survived in, in mudslides. There are houses that survived hurricanes. What are you going to do with that one? And they're probably lost. They probably don't want anything to do with the Bible. And they don't want anything to do with God. <clears throat> Until they get to the great white throne judgment. But we're not there. So anybody who will not do what the Bible correctly, rightly divides, study to show thyself approved unto God, a work with that needs not to be shamed, rightly divine the word. That's what Paul says about Matthew 7, 24, 25, 26, and 27. If you don't rightly divide the word, okay, if you don't rightly divide, you got a woman preacher. All right, she may not get no condemnation, except for from a Bible believer. Oh, whatever judgment she shows up with God, she's going to get the condemnation. You see, the church age is... <laughs> Nothing happened to me, so it must be good. Oh, no, 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 no. Just because nothing happened to you and lightning didn't fall from heaven. Listen, I've been in some church services. I've been, it's like, God, why didn't you? Uh, we're, okay, we're not the Old Testament. We're not Jews that require a sign. And you don't want to build your house on the sand. Now about this, again, okay, let's go see what Paul says, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 11. Let's talk about the rock and let's talk about the sand. 1 Corinthians 3.11 For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. For if any man lay upon this foundation, Jesus, goes to a person. Well, wait a minute. Other foundation no man can lay that is laid. Here's, here is a foundation of rock, and here's a foundation of sand. You got two different Matthew 7. Contradiction. No, it's not. Because the man has got his house built on sand. Jesus didn't say foundation. We're not talking about the Christian in Matthew 7. Paul's talking about the Christian. And as far as being a Christian, there's only one foundation, that's Jesus. Anything else is hell. Jesus is saying, if you're based upon the word of God, if you do, rock. If you don't, sand. Now the Christian is based upon Jesus. His works are based upon Gold, silver, precious stone. He's already upon the rock. There's no other rock. Gold, silver, precious stone is not a foundation. It's a building material. Wood, hay, or stubble is not a foundation. It's a building material. In the law of Matthew 7, the law said, X, Y, Z. That's the rock. 
If you don't do X, Y, Z, you do something, that's, there's no salvation. Not only is adultery and murder, but there were other sins in the law that, listen, there was, there was no offering. There, per, uh, promotuous sins that you did because you wanted to do, there was no offering. That's sin. The rains descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and the beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Now don't, and I guarantee someone somewhere is, well, you know, all the people from the hurricanes, and those people's house fell, you know, they were evil and wicked. That's wrong. That is not Christian doctrine. Now, there may be Christians who are living out of order and God chastening them. There may be Christians, they're trying to do right, they're trying to obey the word of God, and Satan comes along and tries to destroy it all. Job. Or just the facts of life is a hurricane came and you got it. And your insurance company, I, I mean, I'm finding, you think where the insurance companies are not, are, signs of businesses have not been replaced yet. Oh, you know, the insurance company, you must be bad. Cause you, no, you're just living in a time and age. You know what? That's like. What did that family do that, that they're driving home from church or they're driving home from a, from a family house and the drunk driver clicked them up? Yeah, I know. That's life. All, well, it must be bad with the sinners. No, because all have sinned come short of the glory of God. You cannot rest something in somebody's life. Oh, look at you, sinner. And then if you're going to have that kind of attitude, you're not living biblical word. The, the word of God says you're to love your brother and you're to help your brother. Then we start off this chapter. Judge not least you be judged. <laughs> then we start off with that. You think, you know, oh, that happened because, you know, and the little moat in their eye. Man, you might have. <laughs> Maybe the ground should have opened up, sucked up everything you had, but it didn't. Maybe you'll face it at the judgment. Maybe it happened to them for you to repent. Maybe it happened to them for you to count your blessings. Maybe it happened to them for you to help them. But, you know, judge not least you be judged. You sit there and judge that, oh, look at all that happened to them. Oh, you know, man, wait, wait, look at all the sins and look how bad they are. Oh, you wait till God deals with you. Yeah, you know, the sinner man, I was going to show you a little mercy there, but you didn't show the brethren mercy. With the merciful, I will be merciful. You weren't. This is the danger of the law. If you didn't do the law, okay, let's put right where it is. The word, what Jesus, the, the law. You didn't do it. Your whole life was ruined. Kingdom promises and all that ruined. What do you do with the men in the Bible? There are men in the Bible that Jesus healed them. And Jesus told them, don't go publish it. Don't tell anybody. And they go out and publish it. What do you do with that one? They disobeyed Jesus.
One man, he healed the leprosy. He says, go to the priest and do what Moses told you to do. The law is still there. What did Jesus do? He said, do what Moses told you to do. Jesus is obeying the word. And it came to pass when Jesus ended these sayings, we're done with the Sermon on the Mount. The people were astonished at his doctrine. People are astonished at the word of God. They be so astonished, judge not, least ye be judged. All right, let me show you Matthew 7 2, 7 3, 7 4, 7 5. 7, 6, 7, 7, 8, 9, 10. It, what? That's in there. Now let me sum up Matthew 7 for you. It's not church age doctrine. Huh? You're not rightly dividing. They were astonished with this doctrine because for he taught them as one having authority. Well, he's God. The authority is he has the power. Not as the scribes. The scribes taught, you know, here we are, and boom. Everybody, they went home and went about their business. Typical Baptist meeting. Preacher got up there, he preached the message. Everybody closed their Bible. They went home and nobody know what was preached. What's the authority? They went to church. There was a God-given message. They repented. They got their heart right even though they didn't walk the altar. And they left that church house and that message stayed in their heart. And it burned in their heart. And the word... And now listen, the message may, may have been forgotten or... Listen, what... God dealt with and there are still when I read a particular parts of the Bible, I can still remember, I can still see, and I don't remember many things. I can remember that message being preached. I kept the word. I remember the word. I may have written down notes in my Bible about that. I can maybe reflect back in my life, say, you know, that message. That time, that event changed me. And the wind may come and the floods may go and the rain may be. I'm still standing. Or, you know, the, the, the hurricane comes and I fall down flat. I repent. I get right with God. First John 1 9. I just get back up. I didn't lose nothing of my salvation. Uh, I may have lost rewards. I may have lost a fellowship with God. But like that man with leprosy in his house, take the rocks out, bring it to the dump, scrape it off, and just fill in where I had to give it up and rebuild. Go into reading Matthew as Jewish. A Jewish king, though rejected king, talking to his people, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, uh, I'll close with this. When I witnessed early on, I would try to witness the Jews. And they would have, I forget what, chat sessions or stuff like that. Early on, the, when I first got in the computer. I would find Jewish chat sessions to get in there. And I would try to witness to these Jews. I would use Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. My heart was out for the Jews. And finally, a couple said, listen, we don't believe those folks. If there's anything in the New Testament, we don't believe it, we don't follow it. 
only the law, the Talmud, and you know the Moses and the prophet. That's the only thing we believe. I believe in the millennium. They're going to open up their Bibles. Be a kicker in the pants if it's the King James Bible. All right. All the Jews, open your Bibles to Matthew, and they're going to believe it. And Baptists are going to sit there, wow, I thought that was us.